of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the gospel and the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and his life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, Sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem, and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, The master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you meek and riding on an ass and on a colt the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us go forth in peace.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who is an example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
descendants of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, and of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, which one do you want me to release to you? The rabbis or Jesus called Christ, for he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. 
The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with the Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had him crucified, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. So he is the King of Israel? Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness covered over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, this one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out to him again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit.
and behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with whom were, were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, truly, this was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we come to the end of our Lenten journey, and this journey has been rather traumatic and has been different than other Lents where we have not been able to do some of our usual celebrations, our, our usual visits to the church for the different rituals. But again, today we hear, we hear the reading of the Passion, reminding us why Christ came and why he had to die for us. So this is the final week the final week of Lent. And the ceremonies are beautiful because they reflect for us our salvation. We come welcoming Jesus on Palm Sunday. The Chrism Mass, we celebrate the priesthood of Jesus Christ. We celebrate the blessings of the oils, the oil of the catechumenate, the oil of the sick, and the oil of chrism. On Holy Thursday, we celebrate the Last Supper, the institution of the Eucharist, where we come to give thanks to the Lord for the gift of Christ in his body and blood. Good Friday, a day where we celebrate no sacraments, but simply read the Passion of Christ and venerate the cross time for us to reflect and ask the Lord to be with us. And what a time we have to reflect on these past few weeks, where we have felt alone and afraid, just as Jesus felt when he was executed on Mount Calvary. On Holy Saturday, we do not celebrate until sundown celebrating the new life, the rising of Jesus from the dead. May this Holy Week be a special time for all of us to participate in these ceremonies through video, but also participate through our homes by gathering as a family to know that the Lord is still with us, willing to lead and guide us and to share with us his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, and for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death, and was buried, and rose again on the third day, 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who is seated in the Father and Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray that by uniting ourselves to Christ's suffering and death, we may share in the Easter joys of the resurrection. For the church, may we have true humility to worthily proclaim the sufferings of Christ. May those who cannot gather for worship during this period of confinement experience the joy of your saving help. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious. Hear us. For health professionals, scientists, public officials, and all who are serving the common good in this difficult and uncertain time, may they have the patience and fortitude to remain steadfast in their work. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are currently infected with the coronavirus, that they may have hope and will receive the medical help they need to heal. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are in urgent need of the basic necessities of life during this pandemic, that we may not neglect those who are driven to even deeper despair because of poverty and homelessness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the elderly, for those confined to their homes, for those who are ill, may they be comforted and healed by Christ's loving embrace. And for those who have died, may they live on in the light of God's face. We remember those who have died due to this coronavirus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all the intentions of our parish community, for those who have presented their needs on our prayer request cards, and for the prayers we now make in silence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray with those people who are joining us and at home O oh God, in eternal glory, you anoint Jesus, your servant, to bear our sins, to encourage the weary, to raise up and restore the fallen. Keep before our eyes the splendor of the Paschal mystery of Christ, and by our sharing in the passion, death, and resurrection, seal our lives with the victorious signs of his obedience and exaltation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. 
Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your love and mercy. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for those innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts. We are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and giving the blessing, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Our Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostle and glorious martyr, 
with St. James and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we lie for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have, got, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil grace to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, For the kingdom, the power, and the glory, yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge one another with a gesture of peace. Peace. Peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am the worthy. Render it under my roof. Only say with the word, my soul shall be healed. For those who could not receive communion, we will say the act of spiritual communion, the prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot be at this moment, receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, and by his resurrection you have led us to where you call. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, I thank you all for joining us today, and we pray that on this Palm Sunday it may truly be a special day for you and your family as we come to thank the Lord for the gift of Christ his Son. I pray... Look, we pray, O Lord, on this, your holy family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever.